Hello everybody watching at home. You are watching Walking and Talking with a Phoenix. Don't worry, I'm not going to talk like that for the whole video. Anyway, today we're going to be talking about time. If I could have a moment of your time. <laughs> did, I, did I drag out the laugh a little bit too long? Maybe it wasn't long enough. It's all relative, isn't it? To time! Time warp! Anyway, on with the show. Let's start making some sense out of all of this. So, by the time you finish watching this, hopefully you will understand at least my perspective on time. So time, 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 time. It's about time, I tell you. Whatever it is I, I intend to tell you in time, isn't it? Alright, <clears throat> enough with the wordplay. Time, what is time? Well, obviously, you know, it's, it's about, what is it like? I haven't even given this any thought. It's about various, I don't know, incidences lining up into a sequence so that when you perceive it, it seems like, you know, like a freeze frame animation. If you have someone dropping a ball, frame by frame, and you put it together, and you play the video, there's this sequence of them dropping a ball, or kicking a ball, scoring a goal, crowd going wild, whatever, right? And you can measure that whole entire gameplay, that, that you know, ball play, through time. It took him six seconds to kick the goal. It takes the sun, you know, 24 hours to uh, do a full rotation of the earth, etc. You know, and you know, there's, there's different concepts of time. You know, there's empirical time, which is what I was just talking about, and that's measure, uh, measuring phenomena and causation, you know, on a minute to minute level using none other than a clock, yeah? But then there's another kind of time, there's perspective time, you know, relative to the user. So, you know, you might find that when you're having a good time, um, you know, that your time flies. You know, because you're so distracted, you're doing a lot of stuff, you know, it's, you're not really, you know, paying attention to time. If you're just sitting in a room doing nothing, just watching a clock, you know, or doing something really boring and monotonous and repetitive, then time seems to go longer because you haven't got as much happening, you know, it, it, it's all perspective. Now, I'm going to talk about time in the sense of identity, alright? I'm going to talk about time in the sense of... You know, what happened when I was a child, in my childhood, what, what's happening now, you know, what, what, uh, what, what happened five years ago, you know, and how is all of that relative to where I am now, you know, how is it relevant? That's the kind of time I'm going to be talking about. So really it's more of a kind of like a, a lifetime, all right, viewing, one's view in a lifetime, I guess that's what I'm talking about. So I have a housemate of mine. And he moved in, and he doesn't really have a whole lot of stuff in his room. And I commented on this, he said, Friend, you know, you've, you've just got a few boxes of your essential needs. You've got one poster or two, and you've got one toy from your past, your childhood. You know, why, where's all your stuff? Where's your decoration and all your sentimental junk? And he's like, dude, I don't need to hold on to the past, you know. Just, you got to let go of everything. He's got this whole Buddhist detached thing going on, or whatever. And I get that, you know, that's cool, 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 cool. But you know, you walk into my room on the other hand and even though I don't get attached to things per se, it is absolutely full of junk. I'm talking about like, you know, memorabilia everywhere, little trinkets that I've collected over the years from friends, you know, special occasions, souvenirs, things that help keep me connected to my past, right? And that's what he was saying to me, you just gotta let go of that stuff, you know, it should be up in here. You just you should be able to just remember all of that. You don't need all that stuff, right? And I says to I says to my friend, well, you know, if you just keep it up here, that's just that's just one level worse than having a photograph or a video. You can't rely on your memory, especially as time goes by and atrophy does its thing. You know, the quality and the accuracy of your memory diminishes, um, and you end up losing a clear, accurate picture of what it is you're trying to remember. Same with pictures and videos and songs that help you to remember certain things. Over time, your memory changes. You might miss out some things. You might even remember parts of the memory that weren't there originally, you know? Over time, we, we tend to embellish some of our oldest memories and, and, and color them up a little bit and make them a little bit richer than maybe they actually were originally. You know what I'm saying? 
So, you know, I got thinking about this and this difference between me and my friend, very yin yang, kind of polar opposites in that sense. Whereas I'm, you know, more clingy and attached to not material possessions. I don't need things if I lose things or let, you know, let things go. I don't really bother hanging onto it in my mind. I don't fuss about it or dwell or long for it. But you know, if it's something meaningful to me, I'll keep it, you know? So I've got this approach, where he's just got this, you know, be really detached and let everything go, because it's part of the past, it's not relevant to now. And holding it behind is just like baggage or junk, right? And this is, this is the, the base, that's the basic perspectives. So my view is this. This is my response to my friend, and basically what I said to him, and I've written about this a little bit, that you know, what defines a moment, all right? What defines a moment? You know, when you are at a football game and you're watching somebody start off, blow the whistle, and they're kicking the ball, they're kicking the goals, they're tripping over, fumbling, fucking around, you know, and half time comes, and then the full game is finished, and the winning team kicks their last goal, and everyone's up in arms cheering and spilling beer on their neighbors' faces. And you know, the, the, the main player has been lifted on the shoulders and there's the cup being hoisted in the air and the stream is pouring down and celebratory music and just the loudest raving cheers possible, right? All of that, the whole game. When did the game begin is my question and when did the game end? You know what I'm saying? What, what is that game? If you were to define it and encapsulate it as a moment, when did that game begin and end? Did the game begin, what, when the guy first kicked the first, you know, the first ball, first kick, or the first goal? Or was it when the, the, the team that won came back halfway through the game, because they were losing to begin with, right? Obviously, it's an underdog story if I ever heard one. Is it when the underdog team ended up turning the, thing, the tables around and ended up winning the game? Is that when the game really began, you know? And what do, you, what do you even count as a play, to break it down even smaller? Do you count a play as somebody holding the ball in their hands, looking at the ball, looking up at the goal, wherever they're aiming it, the, their mate that they're passing it to, kicking it to, and then when they drop the ball, and they take that step and they kick it. Now when someone says he kicked the ball, does that, when someone's describing that moment, that incident, that phenomena, something happening, is that does that moment only exist in the split minute second that the shoe of the football player connects with the ball? Does it exist when he's lining it up and he does the full motion and the, and the, the ball is kicked and flying through the air and it hits its destination? Is that, if you were editing this on a film editing program, is that, you know, where would you place the markers to begin the clip and end the clip, all right? And that's my point is how do we define our moments? How do we define sequences when do things really begin and when do they truly end and the same you can apply on the largest scale possible one's whole life you know we go through a whole life of many different chapters and many different you know sub stories smaller stories that fill those chapters full of all these really small incidences that are break it down to a cellular cause and causal level you know and when, when does the past become the past? If you're hanging out with your friends having a good time, you go partying, at the end of it, you know, when you're, when you're walking on the way back to the bus stop to, to catch a bus back to wherever you're coming from, you know, because you've been drinking, you can't drive. When you're catching your bus back home, what do you, what do you say to your mates? Oh, guys, have, having a real, real good time. I've had a great night, having a great night. What, what do you say? Oh, no, no, yeah, I'm just, uh, this walk right now is really good. All that stuff that happened a millisecond ago, that's behind us now. Let's, don't hold on to that. That's baggage. That's irrelevant. That's not even substantial to what's happening now, you know, compared to now. We're just walking to the bus stop. That's what's happening. That's all that matters. That's all I'm going to invest my attention to. How far do you look back? You know, when you summarize the night, when you're appreciating the overall moment of the night that you've spent with someone special, do you look in the last five minutes or from the moment that you began uh, hanging out? So apply this to life. And you know, I keep onto a whole lot of stuff because I like to believe that there is no such thing as past. 
I mean, yes, you can measure things empirically when you drop a stone, when the sun rotates around the earth, how long it takes to cook a roast, you know? Um, you can measure these things, and they work for carrying out processes which adhere to a certain set of laws which, you know, are very uh, uniform and consistent. So if you follow these time measurements, or these measurements of how cause and effect very consistently occurs the same way each time if you follow the exact same process then you get a you know you, you, can, you can use it to your advantage and you can determine outcomes more easily and manage your time easier but when you start applying time on a deeper level to life and to who you are and to what your life consists of and things that have happened in the past behind you and things that are, have happened recently things that have happened happening now it starts getting a little bit more tricky and complicated because really all of this holds much sway on your identity on who you are is how you relate to all of your experience thus all of your experience behind you leading to now all of that builds up and determines how you conceive yourself to be someone has amnesia and they forget their past entirely they can be a totally different person they can love music and photography whereas before they were a left brain not really into art whatsoever left brain logic kind of guy you know it's all about science and maths have amnesia BAM they're like Mozart you know it's really how you relate to the past how you relate to that information and what it means to you now that determines a lot in terms of how you know how you perceive yourself to be and your identity so, you know, how should I look at life? How should I look at my life? Should I look at my life as being made up of many, many moments, many, many slices of one pie that keeps getting larger and larger as, as time stretches on, as I get older, you know, and it's always being sliced up. Maybe there's big slices for, you know, general themes of my life I've gone through. Maybe there's more smaller slices for big incidents that have occurred. Maybe, maybe I could cut it up like that. I like to think that it doesn't matter how you cut up that pie of time, it's all still just the same one pie. You know what I'm saying? The pie of life. The pie of life. And it's all connected. It's the same pie. And to me, the same can be applied to life as a whole. It is one moment made up of many slices in time on that editing track with the beginning and the end markers that we place here and there according to whatever it is we're trying to measure and determine but really it's just one pie and it's just one moment and this is why I hold on to things silly possessions and memorabilia you know because I don't believe that they are no longer relevant to now in fact I believe that now is something that has been stretching on for a long long time you know what I'm saying? Now is a pie that's getting larger and larger and I slice it up accordingly, right? So all these events in my past, all these places and these people in which I have gathered all these things from, from which I've gathered them from, whether they be gifts, whether it be a seashell walking on the ocean in Ningaloo with my father. We went, went for a holiday last year. Either way, all these things, they're not just something I look at and I think, well, that reminds me of something that happened in the past you know and uh, but they are actual they're the actual things that were there they were part of my experience unfolding in that moment in that moment of now or that point of time that point of pie and by having them there still today not just in a photo or a video or in my memory but actually having the solid authentic representational thing you know, that I have collected from that instance, it keeps me connected. It keeps me connected to that slice of my pie. It keeps me connected to that s slice of my time and that part of my big moment, my life moment, my big picture. You know, I like to keep various pigments that I accumulate and will develop over the years because it all builds up to my big picture. And I like to en enrich my big picture, my sense of my big picture. I want to appreciate it and see it as vividly and sharply and as detailed as I can. You know what I'm saying? So, that's the thing with life. I I've got a sheath. A friend gave this gift to me, and we we're just children. Jonathan, Ian, Imlach, Raffin. 
one of my best friends I had back in primary school in Gooseberry Hill, Kalamunda. Scottish boy, great voice, very pale, a lot of freckles. Loved to get high and kick a soccer ball and play, you know, bush wrestling with me, standing on rocks, trying to knock each other off the rock. We'd play Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2 all the time. I never got high, but he'd get high and eat his spaghetti. And one time he threw up his spaghetti in his bowl, ugh, and then ate it again, right? And we had many good memories. He gave me a knife with a sheath. Just as a small crappy, you know, brown handled knife. I ended up losing the knife, but I still got the sheath till this day. Um, at the year 2001, and at the age of 11, Johnny passed away. And he was no longer part of my pie. He was no longer part of my life. At that point in time, he was my only friend. One of my only friends I had made, quality over quantity, and all that quality just went down the drain in that moment. And now, you know, I can rely on my memories to keep me connected. And I can, you know, I don't have any pictures or videos, unfortunately. One picture from his funeral card. But it's not the same. When, I've, when I hold that sheath, or even just seeing it and knowing I have it, it keeps me connected to that very same point in my life. When Johnny gave that, he handed it to me with his actual hand. When he handed me that sheath as a gift in that moment that we shared while he was still alive. I still have that now. It's not just a representation in my mind and still, yeah, it's just a physical representation. It's all maya, it's all illusion, whatever. Why is it any better than a photo? It actually has Johnny on it and it actually has that moment smothered all over it, that sheath does. And so when, I, when I'm with it, I'm reconnected to that point in my past. In a sense, you could say I'm time traveling, you know, and in a way, I'm connecting again with Johnny. Every time I hold that, there, there is his hand holding mine, you know? And this is how I view time. I don't view it up as a linear time sequence. I do that only if I'm trying to manage or determine the results and outcomes or causa of causative sequences that always lead to the same consistent result if applied correctly the process you know it's handy to to apply a linear sense of time in that in that for that purpose for that end but when I'm looking at my life and I'm looking at meaning and everything that has happened really there is no such thing as something which has happened there is only that which is happening whether what is happening is cells in my body working together to move my my eyes while I'm aiming and also moving my legs while I'm kicking or whether what is happening is me just kicking a ball doesn't matter how you break it down or cut it up and define it, it's all just happening on a minute level as well as a big level. And on the biggest level of law, my life is happening. And the only time that it ever will stop, and, and, and one could technically and officially say, it has happened, happened, past tense, is the day I join Johnny. Join Johnny wherever he is. It's the day I stop living, the day I die then I would have lived my life, then my life and all the slices of my pie would have happened. But just because I'm slicing up pieces of my pie, it doesn't separate those pieces from the overall idea, the overall reality of what's going on. It doesn't. It separates how I'm storing them in my mind and relating to them, like videotapes on a shelf or photo album pictures with labels to help me refer to different times. But really, it's all part of the same album, the same collection. And I'm gonna start walking back home now. It's going for my finding my 30, you know what I'm saying? My 30 minutes on an empirical level. You know, it, it really, it's just one moment. And that's my perception on it. So I think it's good to hold on to things that really matter to you. Um, just because on an empirical level, it might be counterproductive to do so. And on an empirical level, it might be purposeless to do so. I think there's a lot more reason and, and significance as to why you should hold on to certain things. And it's not because you're being needy, but it's because you're keeping attached to the authentic representations 
of things which have occurred in your life that mean something to you and inspire you or take you to a certain place where you can find certain qualities like strength or courage or hope or faith, some memory, you know, which keeps you going. It's good to have a real thing to keep you connected with that point in time because time is an illusion produced in the mind. Cause and effect is what people confuse when they try to use time to measure that alone. You can't measure significance and meaning and memories on an empirical level. It's all up here. It's all relative. And in this way, time is an illusion and there is only one moment to define, however you will. And there's only one way or many ways to keep yourself connected with all those parts. Whatever way works for you. Hey, if it means I end up being a hoarder, you know, because I don't like throwing out the pigments of my picture or the videos of my collection or the slices of my pie just because they're no longer relevant and they're outdated and they're behind me and they're stale, you know. If some people like to do that, so be it. But I imagine at the end of it, what is life worth? If all you've got is a couple of videos left on your shelf and you've tossed everything else out and you've just got a few hazy recollections, a couple of hazy collections of videos, you know, to hold all the extra stuff that you're trying to remember. You know, what if you throw out half of the photos in your album? What if you throw out all of the, the slices of your cake and all you're left with is one big slice at the end and you try to eat that and get a sense of what your life has amounted to, what it was made up of, just right at the end when you can say what it was made up of, when it does become past tense, when you're on your deathbed and your life is flashing before your eyes, what will it mean to you and how connected will you remain up until that point to really be prepared to see the big picture. If all you've been doing is keeping on to the pigments of the now, pigments of the present, excluding all the rest. Anyway, that's my food for thought on time. It's been 22 minutes. Wow, this is the longest video I've shot, ironically. It's taken the most amount of time to film. Don't want to take up too much of your time on an empirical level. So after you stop watching this video, maybe have a, a bit of a meditation and have a bit of a think about your life, about your now, your moment of now, which keeps getting bigger and bigger, slice by slice. It keeps extending on, but it's always now. That is all that exists, right? Now. There's nothing that exists outside of now. Meditate and appreciate and reconnect with everything that matters to you, regardless of what others say. Take the time. You've got all the time, as much as you're willing to commit to. Thank you.